Rob Vlog with the Harness, and today we're going to take a look at implementing your very first feature flag. If you haven't implemented a feature flag before, don't worry, it's quite simple. So a few things to get started. The first thing is identifying a sample application. Now here we found one from Google Pay with the React Store. The React Store is a React.js application that you can actually modify and to take a look at a feature flag. Now a few ways to do this, you can actually fork this into your own repository or since you're not making a commit, go ahead and clone this yourself. Uh, to get started with feature flags, come to the Harness platform. And the first thing you want to do if you not, haven't used our next generation project before, uh, go ahead and make a particular new project. Like coming to projects, click plus project. Now here I already have one called your first feature flag. So we're going to go ahead and delve right in. So for a feature flag, there's actually two things that you need. One, you need to define an environment. And I actually have one defined here called local MacBook Pro. And it's quite simple with this particular environment. Um, Secondly, when you create an environment, you're going to be needing to make a particular key. Now, the Node.js client, or pardon me, the JavaScript client is a client-side SDK. And so you're going to be needing to make a particular client SDK key. So once you make an environment, you can click add key, you click client key, give it a name. Here I have one pre-made already called JS client key. And don't forget to copy down this particular ID. Uh, once that is all set, you can go in and go ahead and make a feature flag by making a new particular flag. Uh, but selecting what type of flag you need this, for this example, we're toggling something on and off, or if you read the example, it's going to be moving something left or right. So click Boolean, you can give a particular name, a sample flag, go ahead and click next. And just so for example, uh, just when you set up the variation settings, uh, this is the most basic it could be. If the flag is true, serve true, if the, or, or aka if it's on, serve true. If the flag is off, serve false, right? So basically a true and false. I'm not going to go ahead and save this since I already have one called a Boolean flag. Uh, the next step is, is the code level integration for you. And so go ahead and fire up Visual Studio. Now, if you haven't used Visual Studio before, I actually have the project imported, but if you would like to import the project for the first time, you can make a new window, come to the source control, uh, click clone repository and give that particular get address that is right here. And you can, you can clone it into your particular VS code instance. So let's get through all the moving pieces that you'll need. The first thing you'll need is actually to wire the, the client SDK into your Node.js project by including this dependency uh, in your package at JSON. As soon as you've done that, go ahead and run npm install. Now, one of the prereqs for this particular application is actually having Node and npm installed. Um, if you're using a Mac, using Homebrew is great, or if you're using Windows machine, using Chocolaty is great to install these dependencies. So go ahead and run an npm install. I've already ran mine, so it's gonna run pretty quickly here. Uh, the next step is figure out exactly where do you want to put this in your application. So for myself, the common module uh, known as app.tsx is a great spot because everywhere you go, uh, app.tsx is being called. So to actually wire this in, let's go through all the wirings that are needed. The first thing is you're going to need to import the particular client SDK, which is pretty easy with the import statement. Uh, next here, we're going to actually set up a particular function um, to actually call feature flags. And then by using a callback or promise or use effect here in uh, Node.js, we're going to a wire in the, the particular key that you have and also the identifier of the flag. Uh, you can wire in the URL and event URL. Now, if it's if you're having an on-prem installation of this platform, this address will be different. These are the defaults. So you actually don't need to include these for the production version of feature flags. Uh, and basically we're going to be doing this for the, the, the uh, CF client here, uh, basically looking for a few things. One, looking if the particular flags are initialized, and this is all initializing the flags. And then also this is using SSE, so server sent events to make monitor for changes in the flag. We're going to close the stream. And the next part would be, okay, I want to actually move things from left to right. And I'll show you what that means in the top. So basically what we're doing here is deciphering if the feature flag is on or off. And then I actually updated some CSS uh, to move something left to right and then updating the application right here and by using this main div uh, to be by taking the class name. And if you take a look at the CSS, I've added a class uh, by default, it's aligned to center. Uh, when the flag is on, it is defined to left. So let's go ahead and fire up the application, take a look at this in action. So we just type in npm start. And this will bring up uh, the application in a few moments. And the server is just starting, and it looks like it just started. This is how the sample application looks by default. As you see, the shop, shop sign here is centered. Uh, now, if we kind of scroll back to the feature flag, now we can actually turn this flag on. And if you come back to the React store, 
<laughs> we can see that the shop has moved over to the left. Let's turn it back off one time, click save, come back to the React Store, and boom. And just like that, you have actually implemented your first feature flag. There's a lot of art of the possible with feature flags. You can take a look at the actually the JavaScript SDK, and you can take a look at some more examples here, how to wire it in. Uh, we have several SDKs, which we're adding all the time from the client side and the server side. Uh, but with that, you can also take a look at how these flags are evaluated and get metrics in the Harness platform. And that's basically it. Uh, hopefully this was a, a uh, easy to follow tutorial. Uh, follow along the blog. Until next time, Robbie.